So I mean, you have to change your habits. I mean, when people say, how long does it take to charge? And I say, oh, about 15 seconds. And they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, I get home, I plug it in. I leave in the morning, I unplug it, it's fully charged. <laughs> I leave it the full tank every day. Mm -hmm. Going to the gas station is extremely inconvenient. Automotive aftermarket is in a very challenging time right now. It is, it's very busy. It's actually, there's never been a better time for those that are prepared to go in and go hard and invest. But there's an economy of scale and there's a, small shops are really, they're gonna be forced to specialize so they can spend all their money in one area and be experts on one brand or two brands so they can buy the information, the tools and be really familiar with the technology because it's so sophisticated now. Mm -hmm. Or you have to be big so that you can afford all the stuff. So yeah. there's a medium size. It's like the middle class, right? <laughs> Where we get shrunk. Um, we're getting beat from both directions. Yeah. Absolutely. And so there, it's going to change the industry. And there, there's no doubt about it. Between the less service in, in, intervals and the technology and the expenses that you have to do. It's also the secret to the growth of EVs. Otherwise, it just hits a certain percentage of the market and then it plateaus where everyone else, they can't afford one. So a used car decreases in value up to a certain point and then if it's no longer repairable or the only option is I have to get it serviced from a new car dealer using only new certified parts, it's, it, that's, that's just not affordable. So what are your options then? Well, I, 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 can't, I can't drive, I guess. I have to take the bus. But that really limits and reduces the market substantially. Yeah. Now there could be in in BC, and I, I know you've you know you you've heard this in, in the news uh, about extended producer responsibility. Mm -hmm. So in that model under the BC regulations, uh, recycling is actually the last thing of the five R's they call it, um, and for for the OE manufacturers they have to pr propose a plan of, well, how are they going to reuse, repair, remanufacture, and then lastly, recycle, mm -hmm. right? So I, I guess what, what could the OEs offer in a plan of sustainability that, that could promote the reuse and repair? Well, batteries would be one area for sure because they, they have all the challenges. Um, and they're one of the items, at least on certain models that are going to need to be replaced or, you know, or, or perhaps they could be repaired, um, you know, taking them apart and matching up the modules inside them and all that stuff to get a balanced pack is a extremely labor intensive operation. So I, I can't see that happening in repair shops in a profitable way. I can see do it yourself as an enthusiast doing that may or may not be safe, but uh, um, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> yeah. So the automakers need to find a way to get the batteries uh, back, you know, have a second life, whether it is sending them back and having them factory remanufactured or what have you. I don't know what the answer is there. A uh, healthy aftermarket would be great, but the aftermarket uh, in terms of if they're anything like the hybrid battery aftermarket, they haven't invested enough in quality control to put out a really good product in our experience. We don't have a good experience at all with remanufactured hybrid batteries. So in the EV world, I don't think they're going to do a better job unless they're going to put more money into it. And if they put more money into it, then their price is going to be the same as the mm -hmm. OEM. So um, batteries have to be attacked for many different ways, though, because we have the environmental concern about them. We have the you know, there's a lot of energy in those batteries. Even just storing them can be dangerous if you don't do it right. Sure. If we look at the floods that we just had recently, your thoughts of what a safe storage is might not be what you, you know, do they have to be 10 feet above the ground? Or like, what are we going to, there, there's a lot of recyclers in Abbotsford. I mean, they must have uh, had some challenges in their own way. I know. Uh, yeah. Uh, Empire, Empire was, yes. it was, was flooded out. Um, and, and only recyclers, it's with the towing industry as well. Sure. I mean, a lot of these cars were just under a, a three or four feet of water. Yeah. Uh, a lot of questions came out. Uh, you responded to one. Um, there was a query. Nobody seemed to, to have the, the, um, the answer. And then you said, well, I wouldn't touch it unless mm -hmm. you knew what you were doing, mm -hmm. which is probably uh, a, a good advice. So, so touching on battery safety and battery fires, uh, Obviously, for the first responders and including towing, which they're first on the scene, 
Um, it's certainly true that um, they, they, their electric vehicles are, are very safe. Uh, we know that, in fact, they, they on impact and collision, they, uh, they are prone to, to less fires than yeah. a gas-powered engine. The only difference is, is that fire can take 24 to up to even 48 hours, right? Yeah. Um, and we did have a case with a with a tower who the um, the vehicle went into I think it was in the Burrard Inlet and he had just put it on the hook and he was yeah. just about ready to leave and then at that point it erupted could have been going down the freeway. Yeah. How concerned though, just as an independent shop owner, are you worried about fires within your facility? Is that a concern? Um, it is a concern, but I I don't worry too much about it because I know the statistics and I know how it works. I know that gasoline is far more dangerous from a fire and from an explosion point of view. The amount of energy in a gallon of gasoline is like significantly more than what's in a EV battery. It's just, um, um, and they're more likely to leak, right? So uh, it's, it's just not, it's just not newsworthy. So that's why we hear about a lot of these EV fires, but it does make you think of things differently, how we park them in the shop. When like when we're working on them, is it like it's just an escape route? Is there can we push it out the door if it starts to go? I mean, they don't explode. I mean, they don't tend to anyways. They they usually you'd see smoke, you'd see stuff, and it'd be like, well, if I had a smoking EV in my shop, would we try and push it out the door? It, that would be a question to answer on a case by case basis. I'm not going to give anybody advice, but I do think that knowing the warning signs and then you know we've seen the uh the fire blankets they seem like a an excellent uh, i haven't bought one yet but i've definitely been considering one when the numbers start to get up and we're working on more of them uh these blankets they cover the whole car and basically just cut off the oxygen content and they they can't burn and the interesting thing about the lithium-ion batteries is that when they when the thermal runaway starts to happen it's like they produce their own oxygen they can they can just burn and burn and like you said they can take days to go out and they it takes thousands of gallons of water you're not going to put it out with an extinguisher once it starts your best if you could get it out the door and walk away because it's mm -hmm. it's 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 going right fire department shows up it's uh they're bringing a tanker they need to put a lot of water on it